Microsoft built their new Surface Book to be a creative workhorse and is calling it the ultimate laptop. Will the new design eat into Apple sales? More importantly, will it score better than its brother, the Surface Pro 4, on our repairability scale? We got our hands on the new Surface Book to answer all these questions and more. Let's tear it down. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the Microsoft Surface Book. Microsoft describes the Surface Book as a high-performance laptop with exceptional power and versatility, but it also happens to be a tablet once it's been ejected from the dock. That means you're getting two teardowns for the price of one, and we're gonna start with the tablet path. Getting into the tablet was a familiar exercise in frustration. Just last week, we spent a good part of the day trying to get the Surface Pro 4 open, so we knew we'd need our eye openers. Heat and careful prying, we know the drill. And even though the glass is the same thickness as the Surface Pro 4, it definitely felt more flexible. And as it's a bigger display, more difficult to pry up. Opening the Surface Book revealed metal brackets covering the cable connectors on the display, similar to the ones found in the Surface Pro 4. And apparently, the motherboard is upside down, meaning all the connectors seem to be on the underside of the motherboard. Getting this thing out is going to be challenging. The connectors have been dealt with and the display is finally free. This is a 13.5 inch pixel sense display with a resolution of 3000 by 2000 and a pixel density of 267 pixels per inch. On the back of the display, we find a chipset similar to that of the Surface Pro 4 display. We notice a number of Intrig ICs and four megabit multi-in, multi-out serial nor flash memory. Peeling up a thin foam layer confirms our earlier suspicion that the motherboard is indeed upside down and surprisingly sprawling but we've got some other work to do before we can get it out. Turning our attention to the sensor array along the top of the surface, we find a whole host of goodies, including the ambient light sensor, the infrared emitter, an LED privacy light indicator, a microphone, and cameras. The eight megapixel rear facing camera came out without a fight, but the five megapixel front facing camera and IR sensor are glued to the chassis and trapped beneath the motherboard assembly, which makes for some tricky prying. Before we take a look at the chips on the motherboard, we take a moment to pluck away its brushless 0.5 amp fan. The cooling system in the Surface Book bears a passing resemblance to the large copper plate tucked under the battery of the Surface Pro 4, but covers silicon instead of lithium ion. Continuing our journey to the motherboard, we remove the SSD. This 128GB Samsung PM951 SSD is the same one we just saw in the Surface Pro 4. The motherboard is finally free. On the board, you'll find the Intel Core i5-6300U processor and 8GB of Samsung-made LPDDR3SD RAM. You can find the complete list of all the chips we've identified at ifixit.com. Next to come out was the battery, which was glued to the case just like the one we found in the Surface Pro 4. This is an 18 watt hour, 7.5 volt, 2,387 milliamp hour battery that should power the tablet portion undocked for an alleged four hours. With the tablet completely torn down, we turn our attention to the base. The base is home to the keyboard, trackpad, and several ports, including two full-size USB 3.0 ports, a full-size SD card reader, and on the other side, we have the mini display port and the Surface Connect port. Like the tablet portion, opening the base is the same old story, so we pull out our eye opener and prying tools and get to work. When we get the base open, we find the battery attached to the lower panel. This is the real power behind the Surface Book. With 51 watt hour, 6800 milliamp hour at 7.5 volts, the base battery provides nearly three times the juice as the tablet. Combined with the tablet battery, you get 69 watt hours, which is just a little bit shy of this year's 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro. After the battery, we pull out the SD reader, IO board, and GPU board assembly with a 0.3 amp attached fan. Finally, we reach the bottom of the stack and get a look at that fancy dedicated GeForce GPU. This is a custom job that the internet has deduced is about on par with the GeForce 940M. Lastly, we removed the hinge mechanism. The cables slide free of their basic home fairly easily, but they disappear into the spine of the hinge. The segments are secured with various screws, so hinge, spine, and cables are likely replaceable should they wear out. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything. So we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between one and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and one being the most difficult. The Microsoft Surface Book scored a one out of 10, and here's why. After a difficult opening procedure, the SSD can be replaced. So too the glued battery in the display. However, the base battery is very heavily glued. 
The display assembly consists of a fused glass panel and LCD, and is difficult to remove and replace. The processor and RAM are soldered to the motherboard. Strong adhesive holds many components in place, including the display, base cover, and both batteries. And finally, many components are on the back of their respective boards, requiring motherboard removal to replace simple components. And that's our teardown. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful, high-quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at iFixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash iFixit.